Yo, what up? It's your boy King Salsa right here, and I jumped off the porch from Dirty Glove Bastard, and let's get it! Where we coming from? The streets of Bolingbrook. That's how it be. The streets of Bolingbrook. It's where it's at. The streets. All right, today we got King Salsa jumping off the porch with us today. Yo, what up? It's your boy King Salsa right here. And I just jumped off the porch from Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it! And that's right. And that's for sure right. So how does it feel to be in Atlanta, Sosa? Well, I feel good. It's hot out here. Oh, yeah, it is hot out here. And you got on black. I know you burning up. I know, right? <laughs> how was the drive down here from Bolingbrook? Well, I took a plane out here. Oh, how was from the flight? Chicago. It was good. Was it fast? Was it easy? It was uh, easy and fast. For sure. What you ate on the plane? Huh? What you eat on the plane? I didn't eat anything on the plane. For sure. No, you got to pass on that plane food sometime. Absolutely. So tell me about growing up in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Growing up in Bolingbrook? Yeah. Well, I went to Bolingbrook High School mm -hmm. back in 2012. And also, I used to be the biggest fan for the football team during my senior year before they won the state championship back in 2011, before I became a rapper back in 2013. Okay, so you've been putting up the numbers before you started rap? Yes. Okay, my boy Ben a big P. So tell me, what made you want to become a rapper? So I can go viral and become worldwide in the future. For sure. And what are we gonna do when we go worldwide? So I can get signed in a record label. All right. How much money is it going to cost? How much money is it going to cost for them to sign King Sosa to a record label? It's going to be real expensive. <laughs> I know, that's right. Probably. So tell me, growing up in Bolingbrook, right? Yes. Your father took you to where? To what studio first? Studio 300 All at right. the Fountaindale Public Library in Bolingbrook, Illinois. How would you describe your first studio session? It was decent and it was great. Did you write your lyrics down before you went? Oh yeah. I write down my lyrics every single day and every time I hit the studio and record my songs all the time. For sure. How long does it take you to write a song? Not too long. Like a a couple of hours or a couple of days or two. For sure. So how would you describe the support of your parents? To be active. That's real. How did it affect you once your father passed away? Well, what, how it affect me? Yes. I was really upset after since he passed away. And I had to do a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. What did you think about? About how he had to uh, remind me to think about the way he was in life, to think about how people were in life. Yeah. So what responsibilities did you have to take on once losing your father? Well, I had to take a lot of responsibilities by putting in work with my family because my big brother is disabled and my mom's old. And I had to take a lot of responsibilities and the grind don't stop. For sure. So what made you pick up that hustle? The way I hustled, I had to keep working out, Thanks. trying to stay flexible for the rest of my life, going to the gym, stay healthy. Active. I got to stay healthy and strong mm -hmm. for the rest of my life, you know. So how did you come up with the name King Sosa? After the song that Chief Keef made, Love Sosa, <laughs> back in 2012, 10 years ago, because I like Chief Keef. I love Chief Keef too, man. What's your favorite Chief Keef song? I don't like. <laughs> Since 10 years ago, yeah. from Chicago. <laughs> for sure. So how would you describe the fan base that you have, your supporters, the people that listen to your music? On YouTube, 
Spotify, SoundCloud, and all social media now. That's what's up. That's what's going on. So talk about some of the famous people you encountered and met with over the path of your career. Well, I met a couple of rappers in my life from Chicago and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I met G Herbo. I met Lil Durk. I met Young Chop, Chief Keef's uh, record producer and rapper. Fuck with Chop. And also, I told him where he's from and he got rid of his hat to me when I first met him. <laughs> and I was happy and glad that he got rid of his hat to me that one time for the last five years, back in 2017, back in my old college days when I used to go to Elmhurst University. For sure. What you study in college? It's called ELSA, Elmhurst mm. Learning and Accessible Academy. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. That's so, what it stands for, ELSA. So how would you describe overcoming the haters and the people who throw hateful comments and things at you your way? Or joke and laugh. I usually don't answer them in my life. Facts. I just move on. That's what's up. Most people should do that. Exactly. That's what's going on. So what's one promise you will make to your fans? To keep following me on social media. That was going. How do you plan to elevate your sound? To stay mastered at all times. That's what's going on. I'm going to take your That's what's going on. For sure. You already know. And my boy said he want to go viral, so y'all need to make sure. Tell him where to follow you at and everything, Sosa. You can follow me on Instagram at King Sosa World. Same thing on Twitter, at King Sosa World. Follow me. Give me all like my that. followers. Give me all my fans <laughs> at all times. Also, you can like my page on Facebook, King Sosa, musician slash band. You already know. That's what's going on, Sosa. How would you describe being a rapper on the spectrum of autism while pursuing a rap career? Well, the grind will never stop. Facts. What's one thing important? Why is it so important that the grind never stops? Because you gotta stay motivated with Facts. your flow and your battling. And work on your mixing and mastering to do and I shoot my own music videos and I edit them while I'm a rapper and you know yeah he's, he's, my boy wear multiple hats let him know everything you do Sosa what else do you do besides music what else do I besides music <laughs> see me you got girls. I go to the gym huh you got girlfriends oh yeah what Yeah, because I used to have girlfriends since I was in middle school to high school. And I got nephews and nieces all over. And my niece stays out here too in Atlanta, Georgia. For Her sure. name's Valerie Estrella. <laughs> you know, Valerie Estrella is my niece from Atlanta, Georgia. And shout out to Lalani Palacios Romero who stays in Bolingbrook, Illinois. And she just graduated from high school Fact. this year. 2022, class of 2022 to my niece. Congratulations to my niece. You already know. That's real. And she asked me to make a song for her called Love the Way She Moved by King Sosa. It got released three years ago. She asked me to when we was at Pelican Harbor in Bolingbrook, Illinois, right by my house. Okay. And she said, King Sosa, make a song mentioning my name in the song. That's what Lilani Palacios Romero told me. She asked me to. And I told Lilani, I got you, Lilani. I got you. It's all good. <laughs> And I'm gonna do a song for you and Valerie as well. That's what's going on. And she said thank you. That was a big ass shout out right there. Yeah, that's a oh, big yeah. That was a big shout out, man. <laughs> hit, hit the DM, man. I need you to hit the DM after that shout out. One hit more. that DM. I need you to say one more thing, so I need you to let these people know one more thing. What's one thing that you would let the world know and other fans know who are also on the spectrum of autism that while you're on this platform right now, what's one thing that you would want them to know? I just want to let everybody know that you're watching Dirty Glove, bastard. And look at me now, bitch. 
Woo! <laughs> Pop it. Where we coming from? The streets of Bolingbrook. That's how it be. The streets of Bolingbrook. It's where it's at. The streets of Bolingbrook. The streets.